Here I want to show you how the uh, severe storm data interface works. This is for our lab number seven here in this case, but it may be a different lab for you. Just click on this link here, and uh, the above information here, I'll say a little bit more about in class, uh, will help you get started. But the interface is what I want to focus in on right now, and it's a completely online interface. And when you open it up, it usually picks an interesting date and time. Here we have tornadoes, winds, significant wind events, and hail all included in the data set for this particular date. If I wanted to just focus in on tornadoes, for example, I can just unselect those and then submit again. The other thing I can do is I can zero in with this zoom. I can zero in on the data. And one of the nice things about this is you can see the tornado paths a little bit more clearly. But also, if you zoom in enough, then the data that's going to be searched for is only data that corresponds to this window. So if you did like a decade search for the whole United States, you're going to get all of the data for all of the lower 48 states. But if you focused in on just Nebraska or Oklahoma, then your data file is much smaller and much more manageable. So that, that can be an advantage at times. Now, if you want to go back and uh, look at the whole map of the United States, that's uh, pretty easy to do with the reset button. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, zero in on 1965, April 11th. Okay, this is a fairly famous Palm Sunday tornado outbreak. And if I just click here, it automatically gives me one day later. Okay, the, the time here is uh, Greenwich Mean Time or uh, UTC time. And then I click on Submit. And it, this gives me all of the tornadoes that are associated with that Palm Sunday tornado outbreak. And if I want to zoom in on this, I'll go ahead and click there and zoom in a little bit better. I could maybe do it one more time. And this shows everything pretty clearly. Now, if I wanted to just look at the F3, F4, F5, the, the more violent tornadoes, I can select that there and then get a little bit smaller data set. Okay, the other thing that I might want to do is look at the detail for all of these touchdowns here, and that's in this CSV. This is a comma delimited file that can be easily imported into Excel. I can just highlight all the data and then Control C for copy, and then go to Excel, and I'll just paste it, and I'll, I'll just use Control V for paste. Now, one of the problems that we have right away is that all of the data really is crammed into one column. And so if I go up here to the, uh, the data menu item, which is off the screen, but the data menu item, and then there's also an option for uh, text to columns, kind of uh, the right of the middle of the upper bar, text to columns. And here the file is delimited with commas. And so finish. That makes for a real easy um, separation of the data. This column here is full of these number signs or hash marks and I can get rid of that pretty easily by just making the column a little bit bigger. I just expanded the column here. Now there's a file that I'll show you in a second that tells me what each of these columns corresponds to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these columns 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to say that this column is equal to this column plus 1, just for the purpose of labeling it. And then to copy that equation that I have over, I'll just get in the bottom corner and drag it over to the right. So I have 28 columns of, of information. 
Now, columns two, three, and four give you the year, month, and day, where column five gives you the full date. And then column six gives you the actual time. Uh, again, this is uh, Greenwich Mean Time. And then there's other information, state information, and things like that. But if, if we go back to, let's see, uh, this, this here, this PDF file tells me what the different columns mean. So uh, year, month, day, full date, time, time zones and states, station numbers, uh, the F scale, so uh, column 11 would be the F scale or uh, enhanced Fujita scale uh, after January 2007. So just going over here to column 11. So the first one reported was an F4, F3. Remember, I only selected F3, 4, and 5 tornadoes on that. So that that's a way to get at the information. They they also have the, the starting latitude, starting longitude, and and uh, the length of the tornado in miles, I think, is column 20, and the width in yards. Again, I can go back here to column 20, yeah, the length in miles and the width in yards. So that's a real nice tool to get more information out of your files. Okay, well, good luck with the interface, and uh, ask questions as you work through things.